Hi and welcome to Arrow's coverage of InfoSec 2019. We are once again asking the hard questions of our vendors, finding out what their priorities are into 2020 and how they intend to help our channel to develop to address the ever-changing security landscape. We hope you enjoy this series, and if so, please subscribe. Okay, and we're back. So uh, I'm now joined by Carl from Forcepoint. Carl, give, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, hello, my name is Carl Leonard from uh, Forcepoint, a uh, principal security analyst. Fantastic. So over the years, I used, well, I used to run the European Security Lab, so quite technical. Uh, I used to reverse engineer malware, I used to run the team wow. that uh, produced our incredibly detailed technical blogs. But over the years, I've progressed into more of a sort of business angle. Mm -hmm. So understanding business challenges, helping our customers understand how to respond and behave in the light of GDPR and digital transformation and uh, how to achieve optimal security efficacy exactly. in this crazy world that we live in where everything seems to be a threat. Yeah, well, uh, this is the problem though. Everything is a threat, isn't it? But you can manage it. I think that's the thing. <laughs> you, you, you can put it on your risk register and you can prioritize. So we're finding a lot of customers uh, looking at GDPR, for example, and using that as an initiative to kick off other things around the business to make sure that they really understand the data protected. Probably should have done this a few years ago, to be honest. You know, data is the new oil and all of that sort of thing. Um, but some of the times these shifts, these changes in the landscape, necessitate us as vendors and uh, organizations seeking to secure our intellectual property and our critical data to change the way we think. Um, so that's kind of what I advise on these days. So essentially you're saying we, you're helping customers to see security as a business enabler and as a force for good in an organization rather than what it's probably more commonly seen as, which is an insurance policy, a necessary evil, sort of a something whereby it's quite difficult to explain the real value and get the true investment from sort of the board of directors in an organization right. because they're looking at security going just I, I need it so just get it but I, i'm not happy with it so there's been a notable shift in well I, I started this industry getting close to two decades ago now and that used to be the you see a piece of malware you block it you had your antivirus and it would jump in when it knew for certain that something was malicious. Uh, you would see an incoming email, be it with bad reputation or a phishing mail, and you would just stop it. There'd be no real notion of your end users uh, sending data outside of your organization. You had a very strong perimeter and you knew where that perimeter was. Yeah. Whereas now we've got cloud, we've got digital transformation. We've, we've got, got mobility. We've and got yeah, remote workers, yeah. we've, we've got people who share data who make mistakes so the sort of uh, uh, an outside in approach we need to start looking at the inside of an organization and what they're trying to do they're trying to just do their job really well yeah uh, and and achieve their goals their business goals and security was often seen as the no guys no you can't do that <laughs> no you can't go to that website no you can't copy that file well that's that's changed now the board have realized that to protect their business, they need security. And to be able to go fast in their marketplace, they need to share data and share it with their uh, third parties. They need to share it with their clients. They need to open up APIs and give people access to stuff. And that's that, was, that would have been really scary even a decade ago. I think it still is very scary for a lot of organizations, don't you think? Or uh, do you think there's been a, a shift whereby actually the risk of implementing it is actually out, outweighed by the reward of, right. of doing it? So risk and reward, that's an interesting point. So we, we, we've got some customers in very competitive market spaces. They've had to balance, do they act fast and get a new product to market? Or do they do that securely? So they actually chose to just get the product out to market they're our customer and they wanted to do that but knowing that they had that security in the background working for them jumping in when necessary that's the real shift I'm seeing and, and, and to your point about you know the, the board as well the board have become more conscious that cyber security needs to be something that helps the business 
So in the past, you would probably never have a discussion at board level around, you know, what have we done for cybersecurity uh, to increase uh, our uh, security posture, to reduce risk? You would not have that conversation. Whereas nowadays, it, it was perhaps uh, an annual event. Now it's probably biannual. Sometimes it's even quarterly that the wow. CIOs, the CISOs uh, are, are influencing the board. And the board is saying, can we do this thing? Well, the security is in place, so yes, we can. Yes. So, so you see that shift from a no, sorry, we can't do that. Yeah. We're blocking. Yes, we can do that thing. And that, that's, that's really cool for my my eyes. That's a, a really interesting way of looking at it because you're absolutely right. There's been a fundamental sh paradigm shift from do it, get it done to can we do it in a way that's not going to put the business at risk. Yeah, that's safe, yeah. secure, and are, and are we compliant? Yeah. You know, that's where GDPR really did well and that it prompted innovation to first off figure out where your data is, mm -hmm. um, which is incredibly important, uh, and also what that data is, so the context behind it. Is yeah, it of personally course. identifiable? Is it, is it even intellectual property, which is not part of GDPR at all? But it gives you the opportunity to think, to, to do business in the future, we need patents and we need innovation and we need, we need our employees to be generating data. So that, that the knowing what the data is, that's really important. And then obviously you've got to protect it in the right ways. So do you enforce encryption if someone's a bit sloppy and tries to copy a file from uh, uh, into onto a USB stick? Or do you only allow them to work with certain trusted cloud applications? Are you even aware that unvetted cloud applications are running in your environment? Enterprises these days have hundreds of cloud applications and IT don't know about them. No, of course so not. So then you need visibility. So visibility, control, protection, you can have that now. Uh, you know, tools like uh, CASB, Cloud Access Security Brokers, yep. uh, your DLPs, uh, Forcepoint to Pony, next generation DLP. So we've got real time adap risk adaptive protection. It, 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 it adjusts the policies and the based off of the risk an individual is presenting to your business. So can we just, because that's a really good point, and actually, quite often on this podcast, we talk about these technologies and, and we talk about them just as you have. You sort of go, a uh, thousand foot layer, you go, and, and our listeners, feedback we get from our listeners is, that sounds awesome, but could you put that into like a, so give me an example of, of like a, a solution that would use a next generation DLP. Why would you need it? Right. What would be the use case? Uh, so if I was pitching it to, so you know, our partners want to pitch this to their end customers and they're pitching it to, you know, CIO or someone of that level, yep. how would they do it? Okay. I like creating stats. I'm a stats you Please, guy. I love a good stat. So, um, so, so, so uh, there was a company, Cybersecurity Ventures. They quoted that it was $1 trillion have been spent on cybersecurity over a seven-year period. That's great success for the attackers. So <laughs> uh, what, what are we doing here as an yeah. industry? Are, are we really achieving our goals? Uh, this year, Gartner are predicting that security spend is going to be 96 um, 96 billion dollars. Again, are people spending their money in the right way to get a good return on investment and to protect their environments? Probably not. So that would seem to be the indication, especially with all the data breaches we're seeing. So we, we need to try and think of a different way of doing things. So w when we look at digital transformation, everyone's trying to rush to the cloud, uh, rush to automation, rush to make sure that they have the you know, the best data working with that, it's flowing in and out of the organization, it's being shared with their, um, their supply chain, uh, their end users can access it appropriately, but that needs to be done safely. So we see a maturity curve for digital transformation. Typically you'd have, a, say, a next-gen firewall, you'd have a web proxy, and that would be your sort of infra infrastructure-centric approach, because you knew where your infrastructure was, it was kind of retained inside of your organization. But then you might embark on something like a, a sales force, where you're looking then to do information-centric security. Yeah. So a DLP that gives you context of that type of data. Is it confidential or not? Um, is it a, a, a customer list database or not? Um, so there, you'd, you'd probably need something like a, a DLP solution, a, a typical DLP solution. 
Um, so just just very quickly, going right back, DLP is uh, data loss prevention. Data loss data prevention. prevention. Um, but it's also a little bit of discovery, so finding out where that data okay. is because you can't protect it unless you know where it is. Yeah, of course. Uh, and then that context behind it, that visibility of yes, this document is important to me, or it's not so important to me. Um, and then the, the next or the third stage is more of an analytics-centered approach to security. So here you'd probably have a, a CASB that's got some behavioral-based um, initiatives behind it. Uh, so that's to be able to look at your cloud applications, see what data has been shared. Uh, and also you might have a, a UEBA, User and Entity Behavior Analytics Tool. That, I've n uh, that is a first. Right. So uh, for force point, we've, we've simplified it. We just call it a force point behavioral analytics. But the term UEBA, U -E -B -A. is also something in the industry. So ultimately, it's looking at behavior of devices and people. So your That's fascinating. So here's an example. So I was... Um, I was working at the hotel this morning, uh, say I got up at six, which is probably an hour earlier than normal. Uh, I logged onto our VPN. I accessed some presentations because I've got some presentations to do later here at InfoSec. And um, those are proprietary. And I was looking for public facing information that I could take out of our presentation. And I actually coppered it shock horror to a USB stick. So that behavior is a little out of an ordinary once you put all of those five factors together. Yes, I copy to USB sticks, occasionally secure ones. Uh, yes, I access files that I haven't accessed in a while because, you know, may, uh, I might do a presentation every six months and need to update it. Yes, I log into VPN. Each individual item on their own isn't unusual. But when you group things together into a behavior, a scenario, then that could indicate that something's amiss. So then our, my risk level might have gone up a bit. Because the next action I do, uh, log on to Salesforce and, down and run a report that generates, you know, uh, 10,000 customer names and addresses, and then email that out to myself in plain text, that would be weird. So that's yeah. where the risk level can kind of, kind of jump in. So that analytics focused area um, for something like UEBA, an analytics focused sort of security posture. And the next level up is full-on uh, uh, sort of behavior-centric in terms of the human aspect. So it's looking at me as an individual, not just me as um, you know a, a member of our X-Labs, um, but me as in what have I done in the last few weeks, few months? Mm. Have I done something today that's particularly risky for the business? Yep. And then it can apply policy for me. So it brings this... Um, Security applied to the masses, down to security applied to me as a user. It makes it very specific for me. So that's sort of the fourth stage. Uh, we call it risk adaptive protection. Uh, you may have heard of uh, Gartner's Carter framework. Yeah, I have. Um, so th th that, that very much puts humans at the center of attention and what they're doing in the business. And that allows you to then adjust policies to suit and uh, really that's where force point is at um, to lead in the research and implementation of this what we call human centric approach to cyber security i like that so one of the questions i would have is implementing all of this posturing implementing all of this sort of understanding of what various bits of information are in what feels like real time that must be hugely huge overhead to the organization you'll be surprised how much information is already generated by the devices that exist in your organization yeah so even things like syslog you, you've got um log on times you've got boot up times um, ah, so it's got, taking uh, all of server the server log access so it's taking all the sort of digital exhaust that we're generating exactly. anyway it's, it's already there in the organization you just need to know how to interpret it so partners that might be a little bit apprehensive of, of implementing something like this because they're looking at it going, this is going to be such a shock to an organization that wants to take advantage of all this really advanced functionality. Actually, it's not a huge, you know, there's not a huge overhead in tagging every single person, building right. up a profile for every single person, tagging every piece of data. A lot of it is done actually just utilizing the existing digital footprint right. of, of the users. It is a paradigm shift in starting to think about putting users at the center of your 
sort of security thinking and architecture because oftentimes we're still stuck in this data centric approach we're just concerned with this data can't move to here what's the why why is that transfer happening and should it is it good for the business that it does yeah. happen is someone just working hard on a weekend let's not stop them and <laughs> block their <laughs> access till monday morning they're maybe just wanting to do a good job yeah so the the the, 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 the thinking is that most of employees are, are good eggs they're just doing their job well yes they can get compromised but we've got solutions for that and that's the good thing with this human-centric approach and risk adaptive protection. You can already use the information from your next-gen files, from your web proxies, from your email gateways. That's giving you intelligence to then filter into the, the attributes of, uh, of, of the behavior, the models that then score depending on how likely this person is that they are compromised. Because, again, shock horror, security solutions miss stuff. So phishing emails <laughs> come in, uh, data breaches still occur. What can we do to enhance security and build off of that spend that businesses have already made across their existing infrastructure? So you are building on each of that, those four stages in your digital transformation security maturity curve, as mm -hmm. we call it, um, using your existing assets. So it, it's, it's, it's a good thing all around. I really like that because actually what you're trying to do is you're trying to, instead of security becoming the impeding force inside an organization, which I think, if we're honest, was probably appropriate for the previous generation yeah. of workers. Definitely. where, it, But for our generation of workers, for the generation coming through who are constantly connected, constantly sort of plugged in, want to be able to and, and reality is they're going to want to work where and when yep. and with what they need and if it's not available on any device in any format right. it, uh, and actually it's an interesting one because and it comes right back to that whole security being an enabler of the business rather than a, a sort of insurance policy because now you're enabling and you're you're making it so that your people want to work for you because you give them right. the the way that they want to work rather than giving them the way that you've kind of dictated they right. work. In, in Forcepoint X Labs, we have behavioral scientists and psychologists. We like to understand how users behave in different situations. So if your users get frustrated, so the DLP always just blocks them out, right? they're, they're gonna do things differently. They're not just gonna be frustrated forever. They're gonna try and perhaps, um, well, first off, they'll be delayed in whatever they want to yep. do. Um, and they're going to start initiating workarounds, clumsy workarounds. Shadow IT. And worse, they're going to try and deliberately bypass your corporate policies. Yeah. So you're, you're just digging a hole for yourself. So instead, because we have this mobility within the workforce, accessing any device at any time, uh, any, you know, a myriad ways of accessing data, uh, different apps, uh, unvetted apps, shadow IT, as you've said. Yeah. We need to change the way we're thinking about security because the workforce has changed, the landscape has changed. Long gone at nine till five, Monday to Fridays, logging into your desktop. People don't do that anymore, so security needs to change as well. To embrace the next generation of workforce, the next generation of, of data, the next generation of user, rather than sort of just burying your head in the sand. Yes, the, the the opportunities provided by digital transformation are huge. Absolutely. I, th I think I heard a figure that's some, um, I think it was $100 um, trillion, dollars, I think I've got that right, um, are you know, available for companies that are going to win by adopting digital transformation. Wow. Transform their processes, how they do business. It's an enormous opportunity, but you've got to have security as your safety mechanism. You've got to have security to really understand what your people are doing with that data on your networks. And, and that's really where we're Fantastic. trying to drive the industry. Awesome. Well, Carl, thank you ever so much for coming on today. Really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, have a good rest of InfoSec. Super. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed it. Please come back again next week for the next installment of our exciting coverage from InfoSec 2019. See you then.